Welcome back to the Freak Show. <laughs> First off, everybody has things that they like to do, but sometimes these behaviors can transform into the weirdest addictions, like staring at bald heads. What you know about that? Yeah. Now, some addictions aren't totally strange. Maybe you obsess over new clothing or Marvel movies, but that's not what I'm here to talk about to you today. No, today I'm going to show you when addictions get unbelievably weird. We're talking about off the chart bizarre. And before we jump into it, I just wanna remind you to join my Discord and follow my Twitch. Links are the first ones in the description. All right, let's dive in. Here are five strange addictions people actually have. Number five is eating toilet paper. First off, what's your favorite food? Chocolate, pizza, how about pasta? I'm guessing that there's a good number of you who love to eat those foods, but there may just be someone different among you. Yeah, someone among you with uh, <clears throat> different tastes. In the reality TV show, My Strange Addiction, a 34-year-old woman by the name of Kesha was addicted to eating toilet paper. Thankfully, toilet paper that hadn't been used. I think I was just a wee bit sick in me mouth. Anyway, Kesha would eat several rolls of toilet paper in one day. Whether she was sitting at her computer or at work, she would nibble on the stuff quite happily. She knew she had an addiction problem as she was hiding how much of the stuff that she was consuming from her loved ones. She did this by quickly eating a slice of toilet paper when she was sure no one was looking. Sometimes she would even sneak into the bathroom to eat it. To be fair, a bathroom has the right ambiance for a three course meal made out of toilet paper. I mean, come on. Wait, I wonder what was for dessert. Anyway, Kesha's family were shocked when they realized what she was doing and encouraged her to get off that sweet, sweet toilet paper gravy train. Oh wait, that might have been a poor choice of words. The truth behind addictions like these is that the people involved are suffering from a medical condition called pica. Pica sometimes appears in young children for a while, and it's when they try to consume objects that we don't traditionally see as food. This could be soil from the ground or even pieces of wood. Most kids who have this condition grow out of it as their parents show them what what's edible and what's not. A lot of this behavior has been linked to mineral deficiencies such as a lack of iron. And this actually makes sense since soil can contain mineral deposits, though I wouldn't recommend eating it as a supplement. Especially that nasty soil in the parks where people walk their dogs. <laughs> when adults continue to eat these materials, it's usually a psychological addiction as opposed to a mineral deficiency. For Kesha and others who like to chow down on the toilet paper, their behavior is an example of a little known form of pica called xylophagia. This involves eating paper for comfort. Here's hoping that Kesha has gotten all the help that she needs to get over her addiction. It'll certainly cut down on her toilet paper bill. Number four is being a mermaid. People have always enjoyed dressing up. Whether it's for Halloween or to cosplay for a comic book convention, it's something that gives a lot of people joy in their lives. But there's a thin line between passion and addiction. In a small number of cases, people who like to dress up as different animals, for example, become so transfixed by the process that they actually want to live as those animals. And I get it, I do. I mean, I once got kicked out of my local Ewok club for being too tall. Here's a prime example of where passion falls into obsession and then addiction. Eric Ducharme admitted to his friends and family that he was transfixed by one mythical creature, the mermaid. He loved watching films about them and reading books about alleged encounters at sea with them. But despite this admission, his family were still shocked when he decided to live as a mermaid. And this isn't helped by the fact that Eric is actually a certified scuba and free diver. So he was able to take this addiction further than many would. Training himself to hold his breath underwater for more than four minutes at a time, Eric wrapped his lower body in an elaborate prosthetic to make himself look like a fish from the waist down. He's actually able to swim like this, making himself appear to the untrained eye to be a real bona fide mermaid. I'm guessing Eric has watched a ton of Little Mermaid as a kid, and who can blame him? Delightful. I'm not sure that it would actually make me want to live as a mermaid, but it did, however, make Eric legally change his name to one of the characters in the film. Eric was quoted in an interview as saying, it's taken me a really long time to understand my place in life. Being underwater, I feel like I'm away from the world. When Eric swims, he spends three days a week in the water. I'm guessing when he leaves the water, he looks more like a wrinkled prune than a mermaid, but I digress. But his family seems to support his mermaid escapades now, so this fairy tale seems to have concluded with a happy ending. That is until some renegade hunter tries to catch him in a net or with a harpoon. That would be quite a photo. 
Number three is chewing ice. We've already talked about the class of strange eating addictions called pica. Well, here's one where the food can be swallowed, but not without melting at first. Back in 2014, Cosmopolitan ran a fascinating article about Kay Suzanne, a 45-year-old mother of two who became overwhelmed by her ice chewing addiction. But you might be saying, Matt, I like ice in my drinks. I like to nom 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 on it sometimes. What's the big deal? Just, just hold on, I'll explain. The strange addiction started after Kay gave birth at the age of 34 to her first child. Slowly but surely, the ice chewing started at first just crunching on some ice cubes that hadn't melted in her drink. But the first sign that the addiction was taking over was when she started making ice in her freezer and putting it in a cup or bowl next to her as she worked. Then she would crunch down on each each ice cube like it was a flavorful spicy nacho. Kay's addiction soon soared and she was carrying ice with her wherever she went. Soon she was walking around with the stuff in a container and she wouldn't even try to hide it. She'd apologize to people who stared at her as she crunched down on a handful of frozen ice at a time, but she just couldn't stop the addiction. We seriously need to keep her away from Olaf the Frozen. Could you imagine the horror? <laughs> Thankfully, Kay's addiction was eventually cured. She was actually diagnosed with pagophagia, a form of pica linked directly to eating ice. As it turns out, some women naturally develop anemia during pregnancy. That's when the blood doesn't contain enough iron. This usually resolves itself or with some low-level iron supplementation. But in Kay's instance, the anemia did not respond to usual treatments for the condition. Years after giving birth, she still had low iron levels. Both her dentist and her doctor suspected that the ice chewing was directly related to this problem, and if it could be resolved, the ice chewing would cease. You see, one theory is that ice chewing occurs with people that have low iron because it increases the person's awareness levels, temporarily reversing fatigue brought about by the anemia. Eventually, Kay was treated with a special iron infusion by a hematologist, and her desire to chew ice disappeared entirely. Though, like I said, I'd still keep her away from Olaf just to be on the safe side. You never know when she might relapse. Oh, uh, Iceman, oh. Uh. Number two is addicted to bee stings. The addictions I've mentioned so far haven't involved pain, but there are some pretty strange addictions out there that will make your skin crawl. Literally. This one's not for the squeamish. A woman from Kentucky named Margaret stings herself with more than, brace yourself, 100 bees a week. As with many addictions, this bizarre fixation began when Margaret was trying to fix something in her life. She had been diagnosed with arthritis and turned to the internet for answers. The internet, as per usual, gave her, um, Shall we say less than solid advice? I know, shocking. She found a random website that suggested that bee stings could keep her arthritis at bay, and so Margaret's fascination with the stinging little insects began. At first, she would catch bees and then put them on her skin to get them to sting her. Eventually, though, her habit became compulsive, and like many, she decided to grow her own medicine. Margaret cultivated beehives in her back garden, giving her an endless supply of bees. She would grab one using a pair of tweezers and then push it against her skin until it stung her. Eventually, she was doing this with 15 bees at a time. Margaret's husband grew concerned about this addiction, obviously, but wasn't surprised by it. In an interview, he said that Margaret had always had kind of a taste for looking at the odd side of things. I have no idea what he's referring to, but if stinging herself with hundreds of bees is what she lets people know about, then uh, the mind boggles as to what she doesn't. Maybe she lets her husband dress up as a bee and uh, sting her, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Doctors have advised Margaret that by stinging herself so often, the body might eventually respond with a dangerous allergic reaction. Others have taken Margaret's addiction one step further and began branding this treatment as live bee acupuncture. Nope. That's right, people are now paying to have this done to them. Some for unproven medical reasons and some even for pleasure. My advice would be if you have a bunch of bees living in your garden, start selling their, uh, I don't know, honey. It's sweet, it's golden, and uh, it doesn't hurt like, I don't know, a hundred bee stings. And number one is living as a baby. 
Some people never grow out of their behavior. <laughs> like I said, some people never grow out of their behavior, while others deliberately seek out a past time in their lives that gives them comfort. Neither of these situations means someone is an addict, but in some rare circumstances, a person can become completely addicted to a stage in their life in a way that significantly overhauls their daily routine. An extreme example of someone being addicted to a previous time in their life is Paigey, a woman who lives her entire life as a baby. Not only is this something she does throughout her personal life, but she even gets financial support from others who like to see her live that way. Paigey is 25 years old, and yet she wakes up in a crib every morning, has her diaper changed, and then plays in a nursery room for the rest of the day. Yes, she even drinks milk from a bottle. Yes, she crawls around the floor like a baby. And yes, she gets to play with toys all day. Actually, that sounds pretty cool, minus the pooping in your pants part. <laughs> Paigey has a successful business where she raises money as a content creator based around her lifestyle as an adult baby. She feels supported by her community and her fiance who isn't a part of this strange addiction. He does understand though and doesn't cast judgment. <laughs> Some people claim that living as an adult baby is actually a good thing and merely a preference. Like maybe you enjoy playing the guitar, but someone else prefers the piano. No, that's not a good comparison. This is just weird. But like I said, some people like the piano, some people like the guitar, and then some people love those teeny tiny drums babies get to whack on all day and uh, light up you know, with the songs. It's kind of fun, I guess. But hey, at the end of the day, whatever you like, go for it. As long as it isn't hurting other people. Especially if you have any old Beanie Babies or maybe you know, Power Rangers. Now, I'm not saying I had the Power Rangers toys. I definitely did. But uh, if you did, you know, we could, we could, we could play I Miss My Childhood. I but seriously, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to join my Discord and follow me on Twitch. I'm live every single day and we have an amazing community over there. I promise you'll love it, especially the Discord, but especially the Twitch, but especially the Discord. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.